podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining today's national webinar on lead management for realtors, how to convert what you capture with Bubba Mills, the CEO and owner of Corcoran Consulting and Coaching. On this webinar, Bubba will be teaching the best practices for real estate lead management and much more. Allison James Estates and Homes is a nationwide brokerage which offers 100% commission, 100% support, and zero franchise fees. Why split your commission if you don't need to? You earned it all, so shouldn't you keep it all? Our goal at Allison James is to always give back to our agents by providing education, training sessions, live webinars, live events, and full broker support with the most up-to-date tools and technology available. We are always looking for new tools and ways to be able to provide them to our agents at a lower or discounted price so you can keep your hard-earned money. We are proud to announce that Allison James Estates and Homes has recently partnered with the number one lead generation, CRM, and automation system, KV Core. We are thrilled to provide this amazing product at a low cost to all of our agents. Signing up for KV Core outside of Allison James would cost over $500 a month, but we are proud to provide this product at a deeply discounted rate. Today's webinar is sponsored by our preferred lender, Movement Mortgage. For more information about Allison James Estates and Homes, please visit us at www.ajicareers.com. I would now like to introduce our speaker, Bubba Mills, who will be hosting today's webinar. Please submit any questions into the questions box on your GoToWebinar control panel, and we will have a Q&A session during and after the presentation. With that being said, I would now like to pass it over to our guest speaker. Good morning, Bubba. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Amazing. And good morning, my Allison James family, uh, or good afternoon, depending on what part of the country you're in. <laughs> okay, so first and foremost, um, I thank you guys for inviting me back um, to be able to present um, to you guys. And uh, one one moment uh, I wanted to talk about real quick was, was Movement uh, Mortgage. I don't know who uses them or not. They sponsor a lot of events that I do, and I have a lot of are very large teams that have them as, as preferred um, mortgage companies. I'm not here to endorse you know, anybody. Um, I don't get paid to do that. Um, my job is to run a coaching company and provide the best services for our, our clients as possible. And movement is one of the number one people out there that do that. So you know, give them a shot. Um, it also means a lot as a company, as Allison James, to be able to have preferred partners. Um, the more you guys can do business with a lender, the more the lender is willing to do for you. All right. So, Tori, um, I'm going to go ahead and just take questions along the way. If anybody has anything, you just jump in and, and let's make this thing happen. All right. Got it. All right. So I want to go over a couple of statistics here real quick. And a lot of people, it's funny. Um, when we talk about lead management, lead follow up, statistics, analytics, everything else, you know, the, the interesting part about it is everybody thinks that consumers interview five plus agents. Well, based on the 2017 NAR results, you're, you're kind of incorrect, right? Only 2% of consumers actually interview five or more agents. And that is 2% at four, 8% at three, 16% at two, and if you're good at calculation, that leaves 72%. So the interesting part about it is how do you become the single contact? Now, when I interviewed consumers on why they contacted more than one, it was usually because they did not have a, they did not feel warm and fuzzy. They did not feel that relationship, that rapport with the consumers. Um, and then some of them are like, look, I'm going to shop around and get the best price. Well, um, if you are like me, which I am, I am going to assume that you are, I am not a limited service provider. I want you guys to write that down. Limited service provider. Most people call them discount brokers. Well, the discount people that are out there, 
um, it's a it's a positive statement to them calling them a discount broker because that's what they're after. But truly, they're limited service providers. See, I, I I don't I don't lower fees. I don't you know with commissions. I go into seven percent. I charge a two ninety nine application fee. Um, why do I do it? Because I can. Um, if I start at seven and negotiate down, I, I end at six. You that start at six negotiate down to five. Yes, people pay an application fee. Um, about seventy percent of my clients are getting on um, listings and on some buyers. We are getting an application fee up front. So I want to get the the numbers out of your head that you think that they're going to be shopping you around. Seventy two percent contacted one person, which means that the number of contacts that you need to make to be able to talk to people goes into a very interesting statistic. So I want you to look real quick at this. 2% of all sales are made on the first contact. Only 2% of all sales are made on the first contact. And that is 3% on the second, 5% on the third, 10% on the fourth, and if you're good at numbers, that leaves 80%. 80% of all sales are made between the fifth and the twelfth contact. However, a lot of you, when you get leads, if you're doing online leads, we know online leads have an incubation process of four to 12 months. We know we're only going to get a one to two percent of those that are actually going to make an appointment with you now. Online leads are, are, are made for mass, right? I'm going to get 200 of those because I know I'm going to have to incubate them four to 12 months. You, we call those C leads, and that's something we'll talk about here in a minute. However, when you get into IVRs, open houses, networking, um, those are more of an A or a B buyer, and that's something we'll talk about, or seller. So make sure when I'm talking about the statuses of an ABC, it's buyer or seller. So statistics now that I can show you say if you're only making one or two contacts, you're throwing the lead in the trash. At a lot of, of our events, uh, we have like power-up events and buyer mastery boot camps and listing mastery boot camps. We do prospecting night that night. And what they do is they have to bring in 100 leads. Statistically, 7% of all leads contacted bought or sold a house with another realtor. Because most people, when they come to prospect tonight for an hour phone call and 30 minute texting, aren't working on as current leads. They're working out of the gold mine, you know, out of the out of the pond. So statistics have proven those people were going to buy a house, but most of it is your failure to communicate, your failure for follow up. I have to tell you. You do not have to be a salespeople, a salesperson in today's market. All you have to do is provide solutions. That's all you have to do. They went online and gave you your contact information. They called on a sign and you got the contact information. They visited an open house. You know they want to buy a house. They went to your website. They went through your IDX, whatever. You know they want to buy or sell a house. You're not making sales calls. Your job is there to be a solution provider. Well, a lot of people choose a non-evasive form of communication. So non-evasive means that they go online and put in information, which means they don't want to talk to you on the phone. They would rather have a non-evasive form of communication, which means with people like online, we get better results when we text and email and even handwritten note cards than we do with phone calls. Now, I'm not saying throw the baby out with the bathwater. Leads are only good for five minutes. So what I ask you to do is send an email and a text. The minute the lead comes in, wait till the fifth minute and then make the phone call. And that way they have the opportunity to be able to communicate in the form that they want to communicate in and your conversion rate will go up. Especially if you prospect during the day, people. You need to have prospecting nights. You need to have weekends. Um, you need to change your, your systems around to be able to cater towards the masses, not the individuals. 
So let's go over, we call them the ABCs. And I'm only, I'm not going to just tell you what they are, but I'm, I'm actually going to give you the system and the process on how to be able to follow up in a timely manner with your pipeline. Now, first and foremost, I want you to look at your pipeline. I want you to look at the amount of leads that you have in your pipeline. If you have more than 100, you are probably failing yourself and your clients. You cannot follow up on more than 100 leads a month regularly if you are feeding another 20 to 25 leads a month into your pipeline. So when we look at the maximum number, statistics over 20 years of coaching, the number is 25 to 30 new leads and no more than 100 active or 100 uh, people in your sales pipeline at any given time. Now, I'm not saying delete them or I'm not saying putting them in the trash. I'm saying anything more than 100, we're going to put them on a drip campaign, right? And then when they raise their hand, we're going to get back in contact with them but you can effectively and efficiently manage 100 leads a month, maximum, if you're feeding 25 to 30 leads in. Now I'm gonna give you the system and I'm gonna give you the pipeline on how to be able to convert your, how to get a higher conversion and a higher contact rate and be able to make more money. So an A buyer or seller is somebody ready, willing, and able to buy today. What does that mean? Ready means I'm interested. Willing means I'm gonna sign an exclusivity with you and I'm gonna go look at houses. Able means that we have our pre-qualification for movement mortgage to know that these people are pre-qualified. I like pre-approved better than pre-qualified. Um, but we have all three of those. We have an appointment, we've got some kind of agency agreement in place for showing houses, and we've got some kind of pre-qual in place. Those people are called as needed. Sometimes multiple times a day, sometimes once a week, sometimes every two weeks, but they're ready, willing, and able to buy in zero to 30 days. So their dream home comes up now, they're ready, willing, and able to buy a house. Now, these, these are some are people that are 30 to 90 days out, okay? 30 to 90 days out. Now, a lot of you ask, uh, I'm, I'm gonna call them a ground level questions. However, there's something beneath the ground. In fact, there's many layers. But we only ask these superficial questions. Like, you know, out of curiosity, if you find your dream home today, are you willing to put an offer down on it? No, I'm not willing to move in for like 30, 60 days or anything else, okay? Um, you, know, at, you know, out of curiosity, why do you need to wait two months? Oh, well, you know, that's when my lease will be over. So let's talk about that real quick. When somebody says no, to me, that means not yet for number one. Um, and number two, it means that I failed to communicate my value. You understand that? I failed to communicate my value. That's how personal I take when somebody says no. So a lot of times we don't ask the right questions. So somebody who's in a long-term lease, they got six months left. I get my house for six months. If you ask a question out of curiosity, have you spoke to your landlord about seeing if he would be willing to let you out of the lease now? Why do we ask that question? Well, because if any of you own properties, if I had a tenant that was paying $2,000 a month and been in there for two years or a year and a half, and I got six months left, and now rent has gone up to $2,400 a month, I'd be happy if that guy left early. Because then I could actually put it back on the market for higher rental rate. Maybe I've been waiting to sell the house, but I've got the renter in there, and i got to wait for the, the lease to be able to expire to do it. So you don't know what the status of it is if no one ever asks. You know, a lot of you are close to military bases. You know, minute, the minute that people get um, PCS, or we'll basically call it station changes, um, from one state to another, um, you know, that automatically gives rights to break a lease. So remember that under the Soldier and Sailors Act here, okay? So ask the right questions. 
So some of them might be, well, you know, I got to wait until June because my kid is moving from, um, from, from elementary school to high school. And I want him to go to Carlsbad, not uh, Rancho Buena Vista. So I need to move school districts, something like that. Well, you can't really help on those. Okay. You can't rush those parts of it that have a hard deadline. Relocation is another one. You know, sometimes we can get reloads to get purchased and we can do a lease back to the seller for 30 days to be able to extend that time out. Those are another option. If you are not providing solutions to your clients, you're actually failing yourself. Because what happens is if you don't, the next person they attack to are. If you can be that solution provider, you're going to have the multiple contacts with them. They're going to stay in touch with you. We're going to update them. Our job is to have about 60 to 65% of our business in C, about 25 to maybe 30% of our business in, in B, and in A's, we're working with 8 to 10 um, A buyer or sellers at any given time. So if you're working with 10 buyers or sellers a month, any given time, and it takes 30 days, okay, that means that we're going to be putting in 10 to 15 new contracts or listings a month. See, it's, it's not that hard if you run it through the system. Even if, say, you're doing five a month, that's a good year, right? 60 a year. If you're a single agent or a small team, that's a good start, right? So. I challenge you to ask the question below the surface, the one that actually means more than the main question. It's just like when, when we ask, you know, do you ask, hey, are you working with another agent? That's the most aggressive question you can ever ask a consumer and put them back on their heels. Like, no, why do you ask that? Instead, ask this simple question. Out of curiosity, how many houses have you seen the inside of in the last 30 to 60 days? Now, we know there's only a couple of ways to be able to look at a house, right? Go to an open house, shown by another agent, you knock on the door, you broke in. Those are the only four ways you can do it. So if they say, yeah, I've seen a couple of them. Oh, did you see those at an open house? Right now is when they're going to tell me if they're working with an agent. Okay? It's not that hard if you ask the right questions. So next are our C's. Those are people that are not ready to buy for 90 day plus and those people we're just going to call once a month now i'm going to give you a capture screen that you can look at that will give you all the timelines lined up okay these are people like i said they're moving school districts they're in a major relo um another thing maybe they're they can't qualify for the loan because they don't have seasoning of funds or they got to wait to pay off something um those you can't rush those pieces of them so we need to make sure that we are contacting them properly, all right? So here's the screen that gives you the entire system, the follow-up on your lead. So A's, we always have an appointment, and we're calling them as needed. B's, we're gonna call twice a month. We're gonna call them the weeks of the first and the 15th, and make sure you put them on the email address, right? And then C's, we're gonna call them the week of the 8th, and make sure they're on the email address. And your sphere of influence, we're going to call once a month. That's the week of the 22nd. Now, I'm going to give you my opinion. And as you guys heard on the last webinar that I did for you, Bubba is not normal. So let me make sure I disclose that, all right? Bubba is not normal. Um, I use this phrase, and that is, I'll be me and you be you. I don't ever want you to do what I do, and I don't want to do what you do. However, we can learn from each other and put in our own best practices. So this is what I do with my SOI. My SOI knew I was selling agent, selling real estate, or when I own a mortgage company, doing mortgages. So calling them and beating them up, are you ready to buy or sell a house, um, isn't going to be your best contact with your SOI on a regular basis. Let me just make sure we're perfectly clear about that, right? What you need to do is there's this phrase out there. It's called OPM. And most people think it means other people's money, which is the common phrase. To me, it means other people's manpower. Other people's manpower means if I call my SOI, perfect example, I called one of my SOI, his wife um, worked at, um, at Sharp Hospital, 
and she was in the HR department. So I said, hey, I'd love to come in and do a first-time home buyer and a first-time home seller seminar for your staff. So um, I can do this, you know, every three months, one on the buy side, one on the on the sell side. So twice a year on buy, twice a year on sell. And I could go in and do those presentations to be able to give you a value of a company and I'll sponsor lunch, right? That's what I use my SLI for, is their SLI their influence, their friends and family and coworkers. That's what it comes down to. But if you keep beating them up on buying or selling a house, they're no longer going to be your SOI. There's going to be a lot of other words that they're going to call you, right? So yes, let them know. Yes, put them on drip campaigns. You know, yes, do those kind of things. But seriously, use your system the way that a system goes. Now, Tori, do we have any questions before I continue? Um, at the moment, it doesn't look like we do. Just keep in mind, everyone, that you guys can ask questions during the presentation. Um, we do not need to save them till the end. So go ahead and type your questions in if any come up. And Bubba, I will let you know if we get any. Yes, ma'am, I appreciate it. Uh huh. Okay. So here's my theory in life. We count transactions. That's what we do. You know, in life we say transactions are volume. That's what it comes down to. So I'm going to do this next session based on your verbiage. My verbiage is is how many families that I serve. If I serve the families, there's much more than a transaction. There's much more than a unit. There's much more than volume, if done right. So let's talk about the value of a client. So we'll say you get $5,000 commission on a house. You in San Diego, I'm understating it. The people in Granite City, Illinois, you'd be happy if you got $5,000 check to close. Okay. So statistics are five to seven year move. That number changes year to year. I've seen some up to 10. I've seen some at seven. We average about a five to seven year. So we got to represent the buy and the sell. If you do your job right. and then most times you have a relationship with that client through at least their third buy, all right? So we've got a total of five transactions. And you knock their socks off and have the right past client program. This red section is where most people stop. Your business has to be based on a minimum of 40% of referral and past clients. If not, you're spending a lot of money in this industry. And this industry will drain your wallet faster than anything else, especially those people that love shiny objects. Right? So let's get out of the red and get into the green. That's what we need to do. So if we just have one referral, that new client is worth the same value, right? Through the entire process. You have the original client, 25 plus a referral, and a second referral. So we're now $75,000 from that one person. So if, the, if, if you serve somebody great, the lifetime, if we got two referrals out of them, you increased your income $75,000 a year per client, if done correctly. If done correctly. But most of your failures happen after a close, buy or sell. What if they sell a house and they sell a house in, in Carlsbad and they buy a house in Nashville? Are you still following up with them? You better be because guess what? They came from Carlsbad. Where are most of their SOI, their past coworkers, family, friends, everything else? They're still here in Carlsbad. So if you're not following up with them in Nashville, you're failing yourself and you're failing them and you're failing their friends because they can't have the same amazing experience with you that that client did. So never, and I mean never, will you not follow up with a client? I don't care. Even if they move to another country, you're going to follow up with them. It's not hard. people. It really is not hard. Now we talk about, how do I make money? What do I have to do to make money? You know what? I'm going to give you the 
secret sauce, the KFC secret sauce, which is probably the most publicly known secret sauce you've ever had in your life. The interesting part about it is, is the people that are successful in this industry implement, implement. I don't want you just listening to, just looking at all this and taking slide shots and getting a copy of the recording. This information is not valuable until you implement it within your business. And I'm going to give you the four steps that you need to do on a daily basis to make a million dollars in this industry. And it's easy four steps. And you're all going to say afterwards, oh, God, Bubba, are you kidding me? And I'm going to tell you no. Because this is what successful clients do. Are you ready? Here's your daily habits. You are going to prospect one hour a day. That's not hard, people. Right? Let me give you my definition of prospecting. Prospecting means calling somebody you've never contacted before. When you are in prospecting mode, when we're in the power hour, we leave no messages and we leave no voicemails. After the third ring, hang up and dial the next person. It is called a power hour for a reason. And that is we want to get as many contacts as possible. That also means if you're sitting there in your, in your KV core system, and you're looking at what your leads are, what properties they looked at, looking at the value. You wasted time. I don't care what value of houses they looked at. I don't care where they're looking at. I don't care how long they've been in the system. It does not change your script at all. It does not change what your first statement is going to be to a consumer when you call them. What it does change is you look for three or four minutes researching somebody to make a call and they don't answer, then you leave a message, we're five minutes in. I'd say this, you wanna know why you're not setting appointments? You wanna know why you're not closing enough business? It's because you have paralysis by analysis. Our job and this game that we're in is a contact sport. Make more contact. So during that hour, unless you're using like a mojo or you are in like a boomtown or commission sink or something or bomb bomb where you can just leave a video or a pre-recorded message, you are not going to sit there and verbally leave a message. You are not going to wait for it. After three rings, boom, it's gone. You move on to the next one. Every day you're going to send 25 follow-up emails. 25 follow-up emails. That's pretty easy. Those are means somebody you've talked to, hey, I just want to follow up, make sure that the, the new market watch list that I have prepared for you based on our phone call is meeting your needs. Um, I've also noticed that we're seeing an increase or an appreciation in values much higher from the 250 to 300 range than the 275 to 325. That might be a new parameter that we want to look and I can create another one for you. Give me a call and let's talk about it, right? Something valuable with a call to action. Something valuable with a call to action. Next, you're going to send 10 texts. I don't care if you're a millennial or you're a baby boomer. You will send 10 texts. That's all you're gonna do a day, okay? Now, I'm gonna give you the hardest one you've ever had in your life and the one that none of you stick to. In fact, I would probably say that only 50% of our clients do this. And if you're missing an ingredient out of the KFC spices, you don't have KFC fried chicken. So if you're missing an ingredient on the recipe of being a millionaire and you miss one single ingredient, you've changed the entire business plan, you change your entire methodology, you change your entire conversion, your contact rate, your follow through. And it is simple as you are going to send five handwritten note cards a day, a day. Now, some of you that are younger might not have that many friends. So 
that's fine. We're going to send them to SOIs. We're going to send them to past clients. We're going to send them to prospects. The amazing part about it is, is a lot of people say, God, Bubba, you're so old school. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, success doesn't change by decades, people. I hate to tell you this. I challenge every one of you to ask yourself, what did it feel like? When I got a birthday card in the mail, instead of a jib jab, instead of a Facebook post, instead of an Instagram, instead of anything, I got a card in the mail. That feeling is completely different than getting a, a jib jab or a Hallmark digital email card. It's a big, big difference. If you want to make an impact, you do five handwritten note cards. You can even use a company like Send Out Cards. And you can go and put pictures of them. If you've got, you know, linked on their Facebook, you can put pictures, new event. Also, handwritten note cards are amazing for people if you are doing farming or if you are doing circle prospecting. You can use, like, cold directories and get all the contact information from all the people in the surrounding neighborhoods. In the um, Actually, if you are going to use cold directories, it's $14.99 a year. But if you tell them that Bubba at Corcoran sent you, they took $500 off that, okay? So um, make sure you save that $500. I don't get paid for it, so it doesn't matter to me. Uh, that's just a negotiation that I have with them. So, and here's the thing. Every one of you don't have to buy an account. If you have somebody in an office that buys an account, then you guys can use that account, okay? So a couple of agents can team up on that price. But handwritten note cards are probably the most powerful sales tool you've ever had in your life. And it's really not that hard. And the impact is amazing. Now we talk about weekly calls. Tori, did you have something? I was just going to chime in on the handwritten note cards. Um, we had someone on one of our broadcasts, like what you did for us, and he wrote five handwritten note cards every day for an entire year. Um, and just like how you said, how it's so personable and it really um, helps build that relationship even more. He really touched on that. And uh, he even recommended, even if it's not every day, start with five a week or anything like that, but the handwritten note cards are really, really huge. So I just kind of wanted to touch in on that and reiterate how important it is. And just the feeling when you get a handwritten note card is, like you said, so much better than just an email. Yeah, so Tori, you 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 are younger than I am. Um, you can just look at our pictures and, and prove that one. <laughs> how does it feel to you, right, when you get a handwritten note card? Oh, I've had people, a couple people who I've done um, broadcasts with send me handwritten note cards, and it's a really good feeling. I have them. I have three handwritten note cards actually just sitting on my desk. I'm looking at them right now, and I keep them. Whereas, like, if I got an email, I'd probably throw it in the archives. So. I have, I have my happy drawer. Mm -hmm. So I get handwritten note cards all the time because I do these sessions, you know, in six countries. I get, I get handwritten note cards sent to me, which I love so much. Um, and I have a drawer, a happy drawer. So if I'm having a bad day or whatever, I'll literally, I'll open up that drawer and just start rereading some cards. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, uh, it's nice to have. I mean, think about it. If you help somebody buy or sell a house and they spend their time sending you a handwritten note card, just saying, look, you know how much of an amazing, um, how much trust we had in you and what you did for us and our family is life-changing. I mean, how does that feel? You know what I mean? So you sending a handwritten note card to even a prospect. Um, the other thing that you can do is send a, um, an Outlook appointment. So you go to your calendar and send an appointment and send it to Tori uh, with, an e with a message. Just say, hey, Tori, um, I wanted to update your market watch. I have tomorrow morning at 930 available. Um, if you just click here, it'll go ahead and put it in your calendar. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like D personalities would love that. I personalities wouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, quick question that we actually had come up. Can you just give us a couple examples of what you use for your handwritten note cards? Yep, sure can. Um, I will do handwritten note cards, and it's something we talk about in the past client program um, and SOI. 
and um, for prospects. So here's a perfect example. And myself as a coaching company. I run my coaching company the same way I ran my real estate, mortgage companies, collection agency, and identity theft protection company. There is no difference, right? So when I, what I do is when, I, when one of my business consultants talks to somebody about coaching, they send me the information, and I actually do a video. I will go on and do a video, and I will put it in a Dropbox, and then I will copy the link, and I will email the individual. So they get a personalized video from the CEO of the company saying how much I appreciate their time and so on and so forth. And I customize each one of them. It probably takes me about 20 minutes a day. Uh, and conversion went up probably another 35%. Okay? Number two, I send handwritten note cards. And I've sent them out for 20 years. I send out handwritten note cards for birthdays. If I know their anniversaries, which everybody should know their anniversaries of their clients. Um, if you have their clients' birthdays. Anniversary of when they bought or sold the house. And then on top of that, you are going to send out like past client handwritten note cards. Um, one of the classes that I teach is, is called the Art of Reciprocity. And it's how to be able to do business with other small businesses around you and building each other's businesses. I get restaurants to give me two for one coupons for meals. And um, I get free manicures and pedicures and that kind of fun stuff. And I'll do a handwritten note card. You know, I'll call my, my, my database, and then I'll send a handwritten note card with a coupon in it. Hey, I had an amazing dinner at, um, at uh, you know, Maria's, you know, restaurant, and I wanted you to have the same experience. You know, I included a, a two-for-one coupon for you and your wife to go, right? Something as small as that. A congratulations. Hey, I noticed that... Uh, you know, Ohio State is, is ranked third. You know, I know your son just went through this year. Um, you know, I, I just wanted to, you know, send you a congratulations for being amazing, amazing parents, right? I've done them as simple as, you know what? You were just heavy on my heart, and I just wanted to send you a card just to see how you were doing. You know, people, I, I want to make sure everybody is perfectly clear. Real estate is one of the easiest industries that are out there and one of the most highest paid. The people that make it hard are doing it themselves. Buyers are going to be buyers and sellers are going to be sellers. Everything is predictable on what a buyer or seller is going to do. So you have to know what that next step is. You have to know how to be able to engage with new clients and we use DISC. I use an Intermetrics DISC, and I do a full DISC training. Like, you know every personality type. And in less than a minute, I can tell you what kind of personality type you are, and I can customize my message to you. In my CRM, it has a spot that has personality style. So my entire company knows when they pull up that contact or that lead or that client, what personality type they are. So they know how to communicate effectively with that client. They know when we're doing handwritten note cards. They know when we're doing follow-up calls. They know when we're doing emails. It's an easy, easy, easy business. The hard part about it is, is the competition, for one. The cost of staying in business, for two. And three, is making sure that you are staying ethical, moral, that you are staying legal, and you are being authentic, and you are being genuine. The first three are required. The second two are mandatory. If you're not authentic and genuine, if you don't, if you don't have anything to say to somebody, then, then don't say anything to them. Or you can just say, like, you know, I, I haven't heard from you in a while. You know, uh, just wanted to check in with you. You know, maybe set up a, a lunch. Do you know how many times I've gone to clients' works and just dropped off a coffee? Hey, I was in the neighborhood, man. I just want to drop you off a coffee. We have a favorites list. I know their favorite alcoholic drink, non-alcoholic drink. Um, their favorite um, soda. I know their favorite sports teams um, and their favorite destinations to go to and their favorite Starbucks drinks. So with that, I can customize anything. And also their favorite store shop. At. I can customize anything to a message to send them. Or a pop by. Hey, I just wanted to stop by at an extra, you know, $5 Starbucks card or went by and got you, 
an ice quad, Zinti Mocha, Light Ice, and No Whip, because I know that's your favorite Starbucks. That's the difference between good and great, right? So hopefully that answered the question, Tori. Do we have any more on that? No, some people were just asking for examples, but that was great. Thank you. Okay. So weekly, you have to have your top 100 list. As you grow in this world, your top 100 list, you want to turn into a top 200 or whatever, never. In fact, sometimes, depending on how busy you are, you have your top 50. So your top 100 list is the top 100 people in your database, in your SOI, in your past clients, in, your, in, in anywhere that have the highest percentage of chance to give you a referral that year. So once a week, we're going to call at least nine of them. You're just going to call nine of them once a week. Now, quarterly, we're going to network with three small businesses in your area. And we're going to do co-marketing, networking, um, through farming, past client programs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I um, used to have a, an agreement with Tri-City Florist, which is an Oceanside, California. Um, and Tri-City Florist would give me a free centerpiece every single Friday night, I could go pick it up and put it on the open house. That was going to be, you know, my, my favorite open house for the weekend. And then I could leave that behind for the seller. And I put a little note card saying that, you know, this was, you know, provided by Tri-City Florists who do special occasions, proms, anniversaries, and divorces. And it's funny because it was part of the marketing thing. So, um, and we would get that for free, right? Well, I networked with them. So back in the day, we didn't have this. So what I coach today is completely different. You're going to go in and do a Facebook Live video, or you're going to do a pre-recorded video with them. You're going to put it on your social media, and you're going to tag them. And in turn, they're going to put it on their social media and tag you. You just doubled your exposure with one video. So if you did three of those a quarter, one a month, you can do them for restaurants. You can do them for um, nail salons, you can do them for attorneys, you can do them for CPAs, you, you can do them for any company out there. And it gives you the cross promotion opportunity to be able to reach into other people's networks and databases. All right. Now, here's your 30 touch program. Now, a lot of you have one. This might be redundant. You know, I apologize if it is. If it's not, if it is redundant, I ask you to implement it. Um, and most of you are going to say no. So write it down again. Right? Here it goes. So your 30-touch program on past clients, to be able to touch them 30 times a year, is really the easiest thing you've ever done. If you break it down like this, you're going to email once a month. So send that the week of the 1st or the 15th of the month. And then you're going to do a direct mailer once a month. If you sent an email to them on the 1st, then send a mailer on the 15th, okay? You're going to send a quarterly newsletter, include useful, practical information that they're going to keep. And number four, you're going to send a card out for the house anniversary and birthday. So it's not all business. So if you think about that, that's 12 emails, 12 mailers, four quarterly, and two cards. That's 30. It's not that hard, people. It just sounds hard. Like, God, they're going to kill me if I reach them 30, 30 times in a year. No, they're not. <clears throat> if it's done right, and if it's done properly, and if it's done of value, they will appreciate it. They will appreciate you giving them information. Okay, well, I actually finished early. Sorry. All right. That's always a good thing. If anyone has any questions, right. yeah. <laughs> if anyone has any questions, we have a little bit of extra time. So feel free to send out any questions or comments. Um, I do just want to let you know, Bubba, we did get a few comments throughout just saying that how great it was and how many times they could watch this. So as um, a reminder, this will be recorded. If you're interested in obtaining the recorded version, please just go ahead and send me a quick chat. 
I'll write down your name and make sure everyone gets a recorded version of this if you're interested. Uh, while we're waiting for some questions or comments to come through, do you want to kind of wrap us up or any last minute words? Yeah. Um, look, I can talk for days. So, you know, you give me a mic and a stage and I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's funny. W one of the theories that uh, I've been going through my clients, you know, by the way, people, uh, business plans are due by Halloween, right? Um, we'll talk about that real quick. If you have to have your, your foundation of your business plan done by Halloween, and that way before Thanksgiving, you have your final, right? Um, I don't care if you're a single agent or if you're a team, team lead, you own the franchise. I don't care what you are in the business. You are the CEO of your company. If you are W2'd every day, then you're under somebody else's business plan. If you're 1099 for a living, you are the CEO of your company. And it is required that you have a business plan for yourself. If I lived in Omaha, Nebraska, and a buddy of mine called me and said, hey, Bubba, do me a favor. Why don't you drive down to San Diego? You know, enjoy the trip. You know, we can spend here, go some fishing, maybe go down to Mexico. I said, you know what? That's great. I, I got a week. I can do that, right? What's the first thing I'm going to do? I'm going to go to my maps. And I'm going to put in the address of my buddy's house. That's what your business plan is. It's the foundation of where you are ready to go and what that destination does look like and when you achieve that destination. Now, like any business plan is like any trip. I'm not going to stay on that, on that route. I'm going to stop. I got to get a hotel. I got to go to the bathroom. I want to get something to eat. Um, you know, I might find something interesting I want to stop at. And I go off the GPS coordinates to go where I need to go or where I want to go. However, it always says recalculate. That's what your business plan is for. You might be going down a road. It might be good for, you know, SFR, resale, um, second home market, and then all of a sudden REO crashes. If you did not, Reset your business plan. You failed miserably during 8 to 12. Those are hard years, people. So your business plan is something for you to look at. It's not something that's 38 pages long, people. It's one to two pages max. And it's something to be pulled out of your drawer on a biweekly, on a maybe monthly basis, and say, am I on track? And a business plan is not just monetary. There needs to be values of success that are not just monetary values. And make sure that you are rewarding yourself along the way for the little milestones. Even if you haven't hit that big audacious goal. That's why we do goals, stress goals, and dream goals. We want to make sure we achieve a goal. But what's the milestone? You know, if you guys listen to my tip of the week, it's one of the things I put out there. I made a client go pay for a month for four one-hour massages and pay in advance and set the times on Friday because she needed to take personal time, and she doesn't. So I made her take that personal time, and it was a little reward for her. And the good part about it is, is if she misses, I told her to tell the company, if I call to reschedule this, you tell me you will never do it. I'm telling you in advance. So now there's a monetary loss of her not taking a pleasure time of work-life balance. So now there's a lot. Like, I paid for this. I'm going to go. You know what I mean? Because we can all, everything we have is reschedule, reschedule, reschedule. And usually it's our lives. It's our spouses. It's our kids. It's our grandparents. Those are rocks, people. Those don't move. Everything else moves around them. Okay? So get your business plan in place. If you need um, a formatted one, then Tori, send me an email, and I can send you one. And happy to fill you can You can use it. It's a template that you, that you just print out and handwrite what you want to do. However, 
to be successful at this, you have to share that business plan with somebody. So I ask you to go to your team lead, your broker of record, um, your best friend, somebody. Somebody has to hold you again. All right. Perfect. And then someone was asking if you could elaborate a little bit more on the quarterly business touch. Yeah. I'm a freak with those. <laughs> you know that. Um, well, I'll give you I'll give you a perfect example. Um, one of my past clients who I absolutely love and I'll still talk to him. Um, he's in San Diego. His name is Kyle Whistle. I respect that man a lot. Um, Kyle Whistle started coaching with us and he was 100% REM. And over four years, we got him to 97% traditional, right? Well, his passion, he loved that, uh, that show, diners, drive-ins, and dashes or something like that. You know what I mean? He loves those kind of like places. So when we talked to him, we said, you know, look, why don't you go interview those restaurants, right? Why don't you just go interview them and then do a social media post on it or go live or whatever. If you go to Kyle Whistles, um, he's now with EXP in San Diego. If you go to Kyle Whistle's website, he gets 10,000 views. He gets hundreds of shares. Um, that has blown up because once a month now, he was doing them weekly, but now once a month he takes a new restaurant and he goes and interviews them. And they let him behind. He's talking with the chef. He's talking with the owners, watching them make the food. He eats it, everything else, just like the show. Well, what's your passion? What's your hobby? You know, if you're a cyclist, let's go and interview all of the bicycle companies. You know, let's, you know, what is that part of it? Business is business is business. If you went to another small business, now I'm not big on franchises, people. I know you work for one. Follow my, follow my, my lead here, okay? Franchises have money to stay alive. Small businesses is what we all own. We just happen to be under a franchise. We all own a small business. And if you think about it, a lot of you have higher gross sales than the local McDonald's. Some of you are doing 10, 25, $40 million a year in sales. Do you think McDonald's is doing that much? No, right? So if you think about it, you have a little bit more power than what you say you have. You only consider yourself as a, as a, as a, as a, I'm a small business. You know, I only, I only do 40 transactions a year. Well, in some markets, that's a great market, right? So the influence that you have going in and interviewing, the theme behind this was I had a radio show, 9690 down in San Diego I used to be on. And I used to have, I used to invite companies in, right? Because after a while, Bubba's just white noise. It's just me talking about me. So I would bring in attorneys and, you know, divorce attorneys, or probate attorneys, so, um, uh, dentists, doctors, um, Stanley Steamer, whatever, right? And I would interview them on the radio. Well, they would then go and promote the radio show to their SOI. It's the same concept today, except none of you have a radio show. You have social media. So that podcast experience, or even if it's not podcast, it's just Facebook Live experience gives a huge outreach and local businesses they they would love you to showcase them now when you want to go to do a first-time home buyer or a first-time home seller seminar and you want to put some flyers out you think all those small businesses that you did recordings of would allow you to put out some marketing of course you think those small businesses when them or any of their employees are ready to buy or sell a house who do you think that they're going to go to first you. It's called the art of reciprocity. We will keep giving and keep giving because that's what God put me on earth for is a gift. And you know what? Sometimes I receive. A lot of people can't, can't pay back. That's okay. That's okay. I turned a $40,000 mortgage into over a million dollar mortgage. All because I treated that person the same. And I expect the same for me. So that's what you do on small businesses. All right. And then um, it looks like one last question. What is your opinion on throwing a party to all your past clients once a year? And on top of that, do you have any other ideas like that? Love it. 
I love it. <laughs> you should always have a past client program. Like uh, right now, we've got clients, um, depending on where you're at, you know, in, in Carlsbad, probably not going to do this path, but you can go somewhere else. Um, they sponsor a hayride. So a lot of them have like corn mazes and hay rises in their local neighborhood. They'll bring in like hot chocolate machines, uh, hot dog um, little vendor and popcorn machines, and they'll sponsor the food for the people to go on the hay ride. So it's a, it's a, it's a client party. Um, we have private Easter egg hunts. Um, we do uh, pie giveaways um, for the holidays. Now, if you do a pie giveaway, I will give you a little bit of advice, right? We give, and I mean, we give, everybody wants our money, right? Everybody's marketing us for money. That's just what it comes down to. But I want you to think about this. Say you've got 100 past clients. You know, you can go, usually the best deal is going to be like a Costco or Sam's Club, right? Or a, a local business, if, if, if you have them. Um, we send out over 900 Dewey butter cakes a year. And it's just a St. Louis, you know, little cake. It's a little 10-inch cake. Um, and we send out 900 a year during the holidays. So if you're going to do a past client program, why not do a pie giveaway? And by the way, um, I'll be coming by. If you have any non-perishable food or shoes or jackets or anything else, I'm collecting for the local um, homeless shelter or pet supplies for the SPCA. Something like that. So tie it into something of caring, something of giving. So we're not just giving back, but we're also helping to give to somebody else in need. Um, you know, a lot of you will get into that, into that loving, giving, you know, uh, um, feelings during the holidays. I hate to tell you this. There's almost people in March and July and September, as much as there is during Thanksgiving and Christmas people. So make sure that we're not just giving during the holidays. Um, that brings the biggest spirit out of everybody, but that needs to be an ongoing thing. Client parties, I love it. Absolutely love it. In fact, I think it's mandatory, right? Show that appreciation. I don't care if you only have five. Start somewhere, people. Start somewhere. I love it. Thank you very much for answering our questions. Um, we got a few thank yous from some of our listeners. And I want to express my thank you to you, Bubba. It's always such a pleasure having you on and working with you has been so great the past two times that we have had the chance to work together. So I'm very thankful for you. And um, thanks again for joining us today. Um, and well, I appreciate you, the invite. Yeah, we'll definitely have to have you back. You seem to get um, a lot of good feedback from our listeners. So we'll definitely have to have you back on. My pleasure. Yeah. So thank you everyone so much for joining us and thank you for inputting all your wonderful questions and helping this be an interactive sort of webinar as well. And once again, a huge thank you to Bubba from Corcoran Coaching or Consulting and Coaching for hosting this month's webinar and giving us so much great insight and a wonderful presentation. I hope everyone has a great day and we will see you next month for our national webinar, which will be a top producer panel on November 15th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Have a great day, everyone.